typically I see they're either afraid of looking at their money because Mm -hmm. something happened and that something can be anything. Maybe they overspent or maybe a big thing happened. It was a wrong choice. And so, you know, it really, maybe it took them into the negative or whatever. And so then they just avoid it, right? Because we don't like pain. So we stay away from pain and opening up that bank account creates pain. And so, you know, that is probably one of the biggest thing I see or, um, they've created debt, but it's like, they're, they're like, okay, I can just afford that that month. And then when something shifts or something changes and, you know, it can be a financial surprise or it can be a job loss, you know, those types of things, then they're like, oh my goodness, I can't make it work. And so that yeah. overwhelmed feeling of even trying to sort it out becomes very, very difficult. So what's up, you beautiful beasts. I'm Katie. I'm on a mission to help humans become the best possible versions of themselves and to strive for overall health, mental health, emotional health, physical health, all of the healths, without ever having to step on a scale. I have had the privilege to talk to all kinds of different humans who've been through a plethora of experiences just being a human and existing. I believe that every single time somebody shares their story, at least one person listening will learn from it, be inspired by it, and maybe just maybe, even change the entire direction of their life. These are the stories of humans unveiling their beautiful beast. Keep listening. This is the Unveiling the Beast podcast. I like that you said um, it's a taboo topic. So that when you do say, hey, are you interested in this topic? Most people are like, oh, yeah, that. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, we just don't talk about money enough. And it's it's because I think people get caught up in the fact of, um, well, when I talk about money, I either have to talk about how much I make or how much I've spent. And it's not even that, um, you know, you can just say, hey, are you where are you saving your money? Because I need to find a better place, you know, and th- those types of avenues. And, you know, what are your, you know, what are you planning to do with your money? I know that's kind of a general, but like, what are your goals? What are your things? And just there's a whole lot of opportunity because if you think about it with our life, I've tried to think of an area that doesn't have a cost to it and I can't find anything right like even just sitting there and enjoying time with your family you're in the house you know and you have to pay for it one way or another or the you know warmth the cool you know anything like that and so I'm like okay so that's not it and you think okay well we'll go to nature because nature's free but you drove there that there was a little bit of cost so you you it just touches all areas of our life. Yeah. And so it needs to be integrated just a little bit more. So, yeah. Yeah. And there's also um, a huge emotional aspect of it. I mean, like personally, we grew up with a single mom. So we were Poe. We couldn't afford the OR. <laughs> and, yeah. you know, so I grew up in in that. And then, you know, I've been with my husband, totally broke. And I've also, you know, we've had lots and lots of money, but at the expense of me not also having a life. And so, like, I feel like I've been in different emotional states when it comes to money, if that makes sense. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I have to tell you, single moms were my role models when I was, you know, I was on myself to be better with money. I'm like, oh, my gosh, look at look at them creating what they're creating with nothing, you know, with absolute, my sister-in-law, I do not know how she did it half the time, actually more than half the time. And I think, you know, if she is really working that hard to make her money work for her, why am I not doing the hard work myself? And that can be a different definition, but like really it, you know, it should be that. And it is hard. It is definitely emotional, you know, because I think we're expected. Well, we're expected, right? We have to provide. So even at that, just that basic level, but then we feel this pressure to impress. And what does that right. look like? You know? And so, yeah, like you were saying, you're the time to get the money 
Like, is that worth it? So my daughter, as she headed into college, she wanted to be a music teacher, you know, in the school. And she goes, mom, they don't make very much money. And I said, it's not about the money. It's about working and enjoying life. You yeah. make the money work. And, you know, she didn't end up doing that. But, you know, I just think you have to kind of head into life more as I'm going to make life work for me, you know, and yeah. we all have our ups and downs, mm -hmm. you know, no matter how much we make and the struggles we have. But yeah, it's yeah. crazy. I remember when I was pregnant with my son, um, we were so broke that you know we're already I, I'm already emotional because I'm pregnant and oh. I kept going I don't want to give him up for adoption oh <laughs> that was yes. my mindset though like I'm thinking yes. we can't take care of ourselves how are we can take care of this child yes so, yeah 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 it's yeah and then you know all the responsibility not just with money but the responsibility too you know and it's just like crazy it's so rough at times but I, I, if you can just like, I tell my, you know, I tell my audience on my podcast, not to bury your head in the sand, but once you figure out your situation, bury your head in the sand away from other people and mm -hmm. you can create what you're creating and just find the joy in that no matter what it looks like. So my sister-in-law, she, you know, she single, no child support paying rent, working a menial job, you know, that was a good 15 minute drive to and then 15 minute drive back. So fuel expense. Yeah. And so she would save some money to be able to purchase cable for December so she could watch the holiday shows. And mm -hmm. just that whole, you know, thinking ahead, and that's what I want is just an example of what we can do, you know, and we can create and she just amazed me. She amazed me. So I love that. So how, how did you get into this work? Like, do you, is there a story behind that? Um, yeah, there is. So I worked um, for 32 years, 32 years in the government sector. I retired, but when I had made an agency change and realizing I was like, okay, I did 17 years at that agency. I can do 17 here. And then to qualify for my pension, that was only 30 years. It was kind of like a wake up moment. Like uh, you've only got 13 years if you want to take that option. And so that was when I really got focused on myself um, with my husband, you know, what we wanted. And so we worked on short term, we worked on, we wanted to have our own property to go recreate on, you know, ride dirt bikes, those types of things. And then the long term, both he and I wanted to, if we wanted to retire, you know, be able to take that option. And it was a 40% cut in pay when we both chose that option. So we needed mm -hmm. to be prepared. And so, yeah, for 15 years, I was very, very focused on it. So worked the 32 and then retired. And um, as I was coming to retirement, I was 50 when I retired, I'm like, what am I going to do with life? What is my purpose going to be? And, you know, I am a, an avid fiction reader. I love reading. Um, and I'm like, I could go help little kids to read, you know, helped in my daughter's classrooms. I'm like, I could go do that. And, you know, and then I'm like, no, because then I'll be on their time schedule, you know, and I, I've just worked 32 years on somebody else's. So I came across financial coaching and I'm like, oh, this is it. I get to share the thrill and the joy of being able to reach my dream and help others see that it is possible. So whatever that dream is for them. So that's how I came to be and yeah, fell into coaching. That's awesome. So what are some of the biggest, I guess, tips or strategies for somebody, let's say, who has never even considered saving or can or has knows nothing about finances at all, if that makes sense. Yes, yes. So uh, a greenie, I guess, right? Somebody who is like, I really need to figure this out, but I don't know where to start. Get with your money. Where are you? You know, how much are you making? Because sometimes people don't even know that. So get real with that. Total that up. If it's a uh, flexible, you know, if it's, you know, 
I can't even think of the word. Um, if it's just flexible over time because you're working different shifts, different hours, those types of things, get real with yourself about how much you bring in every month. And then where are you spending your money? And I just, just total it up. Just start there, you know, because I'd love to tell my audience like income equal expenses. That's a budget, right? And then once we massage the expenses is how we can get to a different level of financial security, independence, and all of that. So take your income and take your expenses. If they equal and you don't have anything left over, then you need to do a little bit of work if you're wanting to save or pay down debt or whatever it is. Do you know, buy a home, whatever mm -hmm. it is. And so just starting there, I think it kind of makes sense for some people. But then the biggest, I think the biggest hang up for people out there who actually read online and look online, they think that a budget is recreated every month. And mm -hmm. it, it isn't necessarily recreated every month. We we might have to um, adjust it and make adjustments, but eventually this budget should just flow with you from month to month. You know, as increases happen with utilities, yes, you're going to have to change it, but, you know, it gets to be a smoother ride. The more you spend time with that, you know, with your money and your expenses and going through and catching what I call financial surprises, those mm. expenses that are regular but not monthly, you know, we don't think about them. And one of those we just, you know, is Christmas. It's one yeah. that people are like, oh my gosh, Christmas is coming. Yep, you've had 12 months to plan, you know, and that is what you want to get to. And I know that can be a stretch for some people and rightly so, I totally understand. But recognizing that, adding that into your monthly budget, it just starts helping your budget to be more stable and, you know, support you in what you truly want. Yeah. It's it's interesting that you mentioned Christmas because every year I tell my husband, okay, next year I'm going to buy gifts every month. I never thought of putting money away every month rather than just buying the gifts, but I say it every year. Mm -hmm. And then every year we go shopping on Christmas Eve. <laughs> <laughs> and we yes. blow a bunch of money. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Is that Yeah, common? and <laughs> yeah, it is common. It is really common. I think a lot of people, they're like, well, Christmas, I've still got time. And I think some people wait till October. So it's a few more, but still, that's not a lot of paychecks. You know, you're looking at yeah. four, maybe if you're getting paid biweekly, five, depending on how Christmas falls. Um, you know, and so, yeah, you can either, like you said, you can buy a gift every month or you can just stick some money away. And if you're somebody that struggles to maybe have it in an account and see that, just throw it in an envelope and, you know, stick it away and just then take that with you on Christmas Eve and spend that instead of, you know, whatever, you know, means you're having make happen and stuff. So, yeah, you know, you've got your car registrations. Um, you've got school fees when you, if you've got kids going into school, mm -hmm. you know, if you do summer vacations, even that can fall in there. So there's a lot of things that happen regularly that we create or that have to happen that we just need to plan ahead for. So. Yeah. What are some of the stickiest or most anxiety causing um, aspects of finances? Do you think uh, you know, people, they get so overwhelmed. So typically I see they're either afraid of looking at their money because mm -hmm. something happened and that something can be anything. Maybe they overspent or maybe a big thing happened. It was a wrong choice. And so, you know, it really, maybe it took them into the negative or whatever. And so then they just avoid it, right? Because we don't like pain. So we stay away from pain and opening up that bank account creates pain. And so, you know, that is probably one of the biggest thing I see or um, they've created debt. And I say that like, we do have to live with debt. And I also had debt, you know, mm -hmm. but it's like, they're, they're like, okay, I can just afford that that month. And then when something shifts or something changes and, you know, it can be a financial surprise or it can be a job loss, you know, those types of things, then they're like, oh my goodness, I can't make it work. And so that yeah. overwhelmed feeling of even trying to sort it out becomes very, very difficult. So, yeah. Um, in my own personal experience, I got in the trap of payday loans 
this was mm-hmm. years ago um but you know get a payday loan and then get another payday loan to pay off that payday loan and then i got two and i ended up with five at one point and i got to a point where i just i couldn't pay them anymore so i stopped and then i racked up over $300 in overdraft uh with over what's it called overdraft um, fees overdraft fees yeah uh-huh. yeah and so yeah. And so to avoid that, I left that bank and went to another bank. <laughs> like, and so this is very real for a lot of people. And yes. I found out after that, that my own brother went through the same thing. Oh. Um, yeah. So it's like it, those sharky payday loans are out to get people who are in a desperate state. And it works. Mm-hmm. Well, <laughs> and in my uh, college learning or, you know, because I had a accounting degree and a business degree, I learned through that, that those payday loan buildings are paid in full. That is how much money they are making. And it's mm. just crazy for me to think that they don't have to create a loan to build a building that you're walking into, you know, and typically yeah. there's somebody else on the other side. So I'm sure they're getting, you know, some money from there, but those things are paid for in full every time they build a new one. And it just astounded me. I was like, wow. So yeah. Yeah, but it is, it's hard to get in that cycle and then trying to break out of that, you know, whether it's the debt cycle, it's the, you know, pay, paycheck to paycheck, whatever you're feeling. But those are real situations and real circumstances. And sometimes you just can't see past it on your own. And so, you know, reaching out for help for somebody to kind of just, you know, help your situation. Yeah. My last three clients have all come, oh my gosh, and I, it's not working and I don't know how I'm making it. And we lay out their numbers and literally I can show them how they have $900 or more savings every single month. Mm. And it's just a different view of looking at your numbers and supporting the direction you want to go. And so, you know, it's, it's hard when you're in the motion of trying to get out and trying to do something different. So yeah, totally understand. Are there, do you ever get clients who um, they see like you just said, they'll see the example of 900 extra dollars and they choose not to take whatever actions because they're so used to uh, used to the lifestyle. So I work with them on a minimum of four months. And so that's why I you know, chose that is because hopefully it's long enough that we can establish that. So as I've worked with them, they've all been successful in maintaining that. And they've got that going forward. Um, I know I have people reach out to me all the time, which is funny, it's typically men, and they're like, I want to guarantee. And Mm -hmm. I'm like, I can't guarantee what your actions will be, I can support you 100% and teach you, you know, a new way of thinking and a new way of management, because, you know, I I help them build the system, the steps, the moves, the everything, so they know exactly what they need to do. Um, And I'm like, but there's no guarantee, it's that's with inside you. Um, My one of my last clients, she came to me one session, and she's like, I overspent. I'm like, okay, And then how are you going to handle it differently in the future? You know, and so it does take a while to change those habits for sure. They're not just going to go away in four months, but hopefully that routine and those feelings of, you know, maybe there's excitement in there. Or I know I had one client said, I feel really powerful with my money now. And so that that, those will stay and keep going forward. And typically um, with her that I was talking about, and I had another uh, male like some major things happened in their lives financially while Mm -hmm. I was working through them. And so I think not that I want that to happen, but I think those are ideal situations in learning, right. And being there and supporting their growth and, you know, being able to see how they would handle such a big situation. Cause if it's just normal, you know, go from paycheck to paycheck and it seems to be working out then when something bad happens, I mean, hopefully, Hopefully they've ingrained some of those skills and habits they can, you know, put together those decisions. Cause that's ultimately what I try and teach is how to um, forecast for future and then make different decisions when things change. So, yeah, I love that you brought up um, the guarantee aspect because even, you know, not just with finances, but in a lot of aspects of our lives, we want the guarantee before we take the action yeah. and you won't, you won't know 
whether or not you'll fail at something unless you take the action. So we want the feeling that we get at the end of action before we take the action. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, well said. Well yeah. said. Well said. So yeah, it's, it's crazy. And, and really that is a mindset. Um, but it's really just from what we've grown up in and what we've seen, what we've heard, and then really living within those things. And, you know, we've heard, but typically those beliefs are instilled in us between the ages of three and seven. And so you think about your three-year-old, your seven-year-old, and you're like, well, what do they know about life? And they don't, but that's how it gets impressed in there. So I'm sure from your growing up, being poor, you know, <laughs> like you saw a lot. And unless, unless you can like really just ground out a whole different flip side of that or things come, you know, easy, I guess is what I want to say. They're, they just fall in your lap differently. Like it's going to be a challenge because you saw a lot, you heard a lot. And to try and revoice that in your head is is actually where you would need to start, you know, and just changing yeah. those. So I love sharing the example of the, you know, the rural town, the doctor, he's, you know, driving by and he stops at the uh, house and he's like, Hey, I need your bill. So as he's talking to the owner of the home about a past due doctor bill, the three-year-old is standing by the dad and you don't think of anything of it. Your three-year-old, they don't understand money, but then he's observing the very nice car, the very nice suit, the rudeness of this man. And it's all about money. So it instantly he, you know, is like, okay, I don't want to drive nice things. I don't want to have, you know, a lot of money. Yeah. And because if I do, I'm going to be rude. And it's just that that's how we get. And so learning to escape that and not have so much ties to money, right, is what we need to try and do. Yeah. I am very grateful with how I grew up. <laughs> I, I do think it, it added a lot of um, capacity for gratitude, um, being grateful for what we have. My mom would sit us down and be like, okay, guys, the electricity is going to be turned off in a couple of weeks, but we'll be able to pay it, blah, blah, blah. So we had our candles. <laughs> oh, I love you know, it. it. It was like, and it, that didn't happen very often, but right. But it, she made it a group team thing, I even though that. we were kids. Um, and I, I think a lot of parents try to hide that from their kids. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I'm grateful that my mom didn't hide it from us. And she sat us down, and we had she called we called them powwows, and. It was like, okay, guys, this is what's going on. Um, this is what we're going to eat this week. And here's how you can help, you know, stuff like oh, that. Not not financially, because we were kids, but. Right, right. Yeah. But just to be there and just to know, because it's easier when we do know, right? Like, yeah. Okay. You're going to have macaroni and cheese for five days. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. So I know what to expect. So, yeah, yeah. I love that. I love yeah. that. So. Yeah. And then she also. um her biggest strategy for allowing us to live in a house instead of a smaller space was roommates. We always had roommates growing oh, up. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Exploring. I love that. And that's the thing too, like anybody, right? Anybody with any amount of money can explore opportunities just like that. Just like you shared, you know, it just is such an eye opener. I love those stories. I love those stories, you know, and like you said, like, the electricity is going off and it's like, oh my gosh, how awful, how horrible, which yes, on the one side of it, but your mom didn't make you feel like that. Like it was just something yeah. you did. It was a, you know, I'm assuming a short time, it sounds like. Yeah. She knew when it was coming. I, that's, you know, because she, yeah, I love that. I love that. See, that's why they're my role models. That's why they're my role models. <laughs> yeah. They are so yeah. good and so strong and trying to make something out of nothing really so yeah and then I remember later on my electricity going off as a young adult in my early 20s oh. and cooking hot pockets on a gas stove <laughs> yes you know oh, I'm just man. just learning how to adjust and not think anything of it like with, adjust without judgment I guess you know mm -hmm. so thanks mom <laughs> yes exactly yeah, yeah. Yeah, she wasn't able to give you much financially, right? But she provided for you the best she could and then taught you. Yeah. And I love that. I love that. Yeah. So, yeah. And she loved us so hard. 
I say it like it's like she's, she's still alive. She still loves us. <laughs> I love it. But, yeah. I love it. We oh. never, despite the lack of money, we never felt lack of love. So I love that. And that's yeah. most important. Most important. Yeah. So is, is there anything else that um, you think is important for listeners to hear about or learn about? Yeah, you know, I'd love to share, like, create your vision and your dream. I have realized, like, once I did that with my short term and my long term, funneling my money where it needed to go, right? We all have responsibilities. Mm -hmm. So if you're struggling there, you know, definitely find your opportunities and your options because there, there are some out there, right? And then once you're beyond that, you know, get really clear on your vision and your dream. And what is it do you, you know, what is it that you want from life? Because like I said, life is not existent without money. And so create that life vision and that dream and then create your goals from that. And then your money, you can just kind of, you know, funnel it to both of those or three of those or however many of those you have. Um, and that's because I always get asked, how can you balance today with the future, you know, and saving what you did for retirement. I'm like, well, I had the two goals. One was immediate and one was long-term. And so, mm -hmm. you know, while we were working on that immediate goal, it needed a little more money. You know, I didn't neglect the long-term, but it, understanding how to kind of balance those kind of came with that. Okay. We've got to do that. Once that was done, you know, I purchased the piece of property, paid for the vehicles and all of that, that money could go to, you know, the long, long term. And so, you know, just thinking through it that way and building out those steps in a way. So your dream is the ultimate, your goals are within, and then you've got to have your action steps and just start with the baby one. Just start mm -hmm. with a baby step that doesn't overwhelm you. Cause I know a lot of people are like, okay, but they're saving this much in their retirement or, oh my gosh, they have that much in emergency funds or, you know, oh, they only spend this much on groceries. That's them and that's not you. So start with what doesn't overwhelm you to find your way out of, out of what you have going on or into what you want. I love it. So I, I do have um, a last question for you. And I feel like I just asked it in another way, but this is, it's more like on a deep level. Okay. Um, if you had one piece of advice that you could give to the world, what would it be? Enjoy the now and try to remove money out of that enjoyment for the now. I think we're a lot of times searching for more and we feel like that more has to be with the money that the money is going to make that happen and essentially you are the one that's going to make that happen and once you free yourself from the money um you can take those steps yes there are certain things that require a certain amount of money but you can you can get there you can get there i, I my recent client came to me um she had a clear dream I want a hundred doors. So she wants to be a real estate, you know, mm. investor. A hundred doors by the time I'm 50. She had yet to purchase her own home to live in. Mm. And she was 43. And I'm like, okay, your goal is clear though. And she goes, but I can't figure out these steps, these steps in between. And she's got a six-figure business. She's a CEO for people. So she's helping them with their systems and operations in their business. And this was just overwhelming to her. And I'll tell you what, I was like, okay, here's how we're going to set up your system. And she ran with it. She thought it would be a year to 18 months before she bought her first home. She's expecting it to be this spring that that will happen. And right. so, you know, it's like really root yourself in that dream, but don't limit yourself with your money either. Because as I was talking to her, you know, we she told me her goal from the very first and we were working on it. And then I went back to clarify it so that we could get some action steps into place. And she goes, I know, I know I shouldn't. And I said, no, you keep your dream. You're 44 now, so she'd turn in 44 since we'd worked together. But if you don't make it when you're 50 and it's 52 instead, who cares? Who cares? And so recognizing that, state your dream. If it's not exact, don't ever give up. So I love it. Ladies and gentlemen, Daylene Higgins signing off until next time.